So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where Russia and Finland go to war. Now when you think of the Winter War, you obviously think of these two countries, well the Soviet Union and Finland that is, but you also think about the Finnish victories. So what would happen if a second Winter War were to break out today? If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It really helps the channel grow and it shows me that you guys are enjoying these videos. And yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now as of recently, Finland has been aspiring to join NATO. There's been no official request to submit an application, but it is highly speculated that they will indeed join the alliance within the next coming weeks or months, maybe even days, I don't know. So with that in mind, we can kind of assume that other countries would get involved, but for now we're going to be playing it out as a 1v1, and we have Russia declaring war on Finland. So with this second winter war breaking out, we're bound to have a lot of negative opinions being thrown at Russia, even more so because, you know, the whole Ukraine thing, which, you know, we can go ahead and throw that in there just because. But yeah, Russia is definitely no longer seen as a good or friendly country, and a majority of the world is is not liking this area but will they do anything no not for now at least so since we have russia on the offensive here we're actually going to be having russian troops crossing over into southern finland we also have a small campaign over here in mid finland in order to cut the country into two although i'm not really sure what cutting this off will do but yes that division is now pushing out a russian convoy starts to move down towards helsinki while russian troops advance across the border their spearhead out towards the baltic sea continues as it nears the coast but it is at this point that the finnish special forces are ready and Russia starts to get pushed back. We have the Northern Spearhead being pushed completely back to the Russian border, and the convoy heading towards Helsinki is completely pushed back. Russian troops are kicked out of southern Finland, and we even see some Finnish soldiers crossing over. Down south in Ukraine, we see Russia's special operations continue. The Russians see great success in pushing over to the Dnieper River, and eventually a front is held up against it. But with this new winter war breaking out, we actually have Ukraine getting a little bit of a break here. An offensive down south leads to the recapturing of a lot of cities over here in near Crimea. And speaking of which, Ukraine actually pushes over and manages to separate Russia and the two. As of now, it isn't really Ukraine's goal to take over all of Crimea, even though they do claim it. And instead, they are more focused on pushing back this really large Russian front line. Seeing how this isn't really going well for Russia anymore, we have Belarus joining this war in order to help out their ally. Belarus offers another front for Russia as Belarusian troops start to push down towards Kyiv. Chernobyl is retaken by the Belarusians and Russians. And like I said, there is a group pushing towards Kyiv. So with even more distractions in this war, we have Finland calling in one of their allies. Said ally is Estonia. You can't have Finland without Estonia. Now, if this was a good idea or not, I'm not really sure, but we do know that there are Finnish troops over here in Estonia, and they start to advance into Russia. This mostly serves as a distraction as we see a small withdrawal of Russian troops up north and Finland pushing across the border. Estonia's dream does not last long though as the Russians now meet up and start to overwhelm these Estonian armies. Over in Northern Finland, we have a lot of special forces duking it out, but Russia does have the advantage here because, you know, Siberia exists. So the Russians make a successful spearhead across and manage to cut Finland into two pieces. We have Finland kicking Russian troops out of southern Finland and once again pushing across the border. All right, so at this point in the war, it doesn't look like any sides are relatively winning. When you break it down to like uh, valuable land, Finland is technically winning the winter war so far. But that given, St. Petersburg is right there. So if Finnish forces could, you know, sneak down the coast and capture it, that would be a big win for Finland. But for now, they don't. And Estonia gets all their troops kicked back into Estonia. Russian troops in cross over into Estonia and in an incident that was probably maybe staged by the Russians we have Russian troops crossing over into Latvia thus pulling in Latvia to the war now if you haven't noticed already there's no NATO in this because I never really like to do NATO I don't like to do any alliances for that matter so no UN no EU no NATO and that's just because you know it makes the scenario more interesting and more I guess fair for each country so while Russian and Belarusian troops start to push into these Baltic countries we have Poland joining this war because they are not all about that Russian experience expansion. We actually have multiple other countries joining this war simply because they do not want Russia expanding over to their territory in, in the future. These countries chose to act now because if they wait and allow these other countries to be next, that will only add to Russia's power, and this seems to be the only way to really stop Russia before it gets too big. So with this giant Eastern European coalition forming against Russia, we have them in a not so good situation anymore. Luckily for Russia though, their entire military has been mobilized, and they are maybe ready to sweep across Europe. That is, if they can. We have a quick link between Belarus and Kaliningrad being set up over here in Poland and Lithuania, while we also have a semi-quick fall of the Baltics. Specialized Nordic troops managed to push Russia back out of the northern Finnish area, but down south we do see some pushback near the St. Petersburg area. We eventually once again have another Russian convoy entering into Finland and pushing over towards Helsinki. We eventually see that convoy on the outskirts of the city, but it doesn't really look like it's going to go well for the Russians, simply because 
Finland is Finland. Back over in Ukraine, we have Russian troops completing their front line up against the country, and one ginormous front line is now being held against Ukraine. Luckily for Ukraine, though, Russia is a little bit distracted with some other countries, so Ukraine does have a field day and manages to take back all of Crimea. That's disregarding Navy, though, because the Russian Navy probably wouldn't allow that, but we're just going to skim right on over that. We have Mariupol being reliberated, and with that, morale in Ukraine is boosted to an all-time high. Down south in Georgia, it doesn't look too good as south of Sicilia and and Abkhazia, I think is what it was called, have officially broken away. With this, Russian troops help out these two new areas, and Georgia starts to fall rather swiftly. Eventually, the country capitulates, and that is one less front that Russia has to worry about. Back over in Kaliningrad, we have Russian troops making a push out into Poland and Lithuania, until eventually we have the capitulation of Lithuania. Followed by that, we have a quick spearhead up to Riga, which capitulates Latvia, and Estonia is the last country holding out. Over in Finland, we have the Russian convoy being split into two, and then eradicated. Finnish troops and re-enter into the St. Petersburg area and get as close as they ever have gotten so far. Back up north, we have these specialized Russian troops pushing back these specialized Nordic troops and once again creating a spearhead that splits Finland off from the rest of the Nordics. Down south in Poland, we have Poland making a new front, which is just to kind of push in behind Belarusian troops and they start to do so really successfully. Poland floods into western Belarus and manages to cut off a lot of armies from behind. With this, we have a withdrawal of all troops from Poland and the blue team securing a nice little western path of Belarus. With this, a liberation campaign is made into Lithuania, but it doesn't really get that far as Kaliningrad is a little bit of a pain. Up north, we have Russian troops squeezing out what remains of Estonia until they are forced to retreat to their islands. With yet another front out of the war, we have Russian troops being more centralized into the more important areas. Such areas would be over here near St. Petersburg, which almost completely falls back to Russian hands except for a little slither, and back up north near the specialized forces. With this, Russian troops re-enter into Finland, and it looks like a very quick sweep is about to take place but oh would you look at the time of year it is winter and the russian troops stop if you can't beat russian winter you definitely cannot beat finnish winter so with russian troops dug in we have finland saying you know what that's kind of dumb and they push back the russians so much so that all of these special forces are eradicated and finnish troops once again cross the border with this embarrassing defeat up in the north we have russia refocusing a lot of their troops from ukraine up into finland they retake their lost lands and start one big push into the east of the country it actually goes very well and Helsinki is once again being threatened by Russian forces. We have a small encirclement and then once again Russian troops on the outskirts of Helsinki except this time it's a little bit more contested than it was last. Going back down to Ukraine, Ukraine continues to liberate all of their last lands and starts to push into their Donbass region. With this, this understandably makes Russia very angry but they do start to see this encirclement forming and all of their troops that were in central Ukraine retreat out which means that the area falls back to Ukraine. However, since there's a lot of troops right here now they start to push back back in. Donetsk and Luhansk are retaken by Russia, and Mariupol looks like it's about to have another siege. Up north, we have Poland and Ukraine making a counter-Belarusian plan, which is aimed at basically knocking Belarus out of the war. Ukrainian troops manage to push back all the Belarusian troops, while Poland focuses on pushing into central Belarus. We eventually have a spearhead kicking out, which captures the Belarusian capital. We have their dictator committing suicide, and three different pro-blue team groups popping up. Seeing as these are mostly civilian groups, they don't really expand much, but that's not a problem as the Polish and Ukrainian armies meet up with them. The citizens of Belarus eventually take power and the country surrenders, which leads to one very angry Russian man in Moscow. But Moscow was a long ways away and is probably not even a goal of this war, so for now, Operation Baltics is commenced. With the help of Sweden and Norway, naval landings are made over here in western Estonia, and one over here near Riga. Another spearhead is created, which pushes up to the city, while the Estonian front pushes down the coast. Back over in Finland, we see Finnish troops once again prevailing over the Russians as they manage to push them back. This isn't 100% though, as a stalemate is reached over here in southeastern Finland. However, up north, we do have these special Finnish forces completing their, uh, I guess, spearhead, which cuts off the Kola Peninsula from the rest of Russia. We do a little speed maneuver, and this entire area falls over to the blue team. So that might not actually be that useful for Finland, but it still looks pretty good on a map, you know, we, they can say that they took all this now however it doesn't look too good elsewhere such as you know eastern ukraine or the entire baltic area but going on back down to ukraine since they used up a lot of troops in this belarusian offensive we have the russians swarming back in mariupol is once again sieged and the russians are on the verge of retaking crimea this time their tactics are a lot more messy as their spearheads poking out from pretty much every angle there is and the battle of kiev starts down south we have the russian government fully funding transnistria which causes it to join the war now russian troops have secretly been pumped into this area when the russia was closer to it and with that russian troops moved to secure moldova 
Moldova under their rule. Now I know Moldova is a little bit mountainous, but they were definitely not prepared for this and the country quickly falls to Russia. Now this does not sell well for somebody though, because Romania joins the war on the side of the blue team. Historically, Moldova used to be a part of Romania, so they were not having that. Romanian troops push into Western Moldova, but since there is that large presence of Russian troops, it doesn't really go anywhere. Back over in Ukraine, we have one of the largest encirclements in history being made, but it doesn't really seem like it's gonna last because the Ukrainian troops simply just poke their way back out. With that embarrassing feat, we have the spearheads being drawn back, and it once again looks like Ukraine will be able to retake Crimea. Back up in the Baltics, we have Riga being captured, which leads to a swift liberation of Latvia and Lithuania. Back over in Estonia and Northern Latvia though, it doesn't look as well as a stalemate is reached. In Belarus, we have Russian troops crossing over into the newish kind of country, which causes it to officially join the war on the side of the blue team. Now remember, I said Belarus did get a new government. So with that, we have Belarus falling pretty quickly over to Russia due to a lack of control by the blue team. Poland had mainly been focusing its troops on capturing Leningrad, and as well as holding back the Russian troops up north. Ukraine on the other end has their own little problem as you can see. So yeah, everyone really couldn't hold this back. Back over up north here, we have the Finnish special forces continuing to push down into Russia, and it is here that we finally see the tide of the war change. Polish troops managed to successfully capture all of Kaliningrad after months of fighting, and from here, Russian troops start to get drawn out of Eastern Europe. We eventually have the liberation of both Estonia and Latvia, while Russian forces in Finland are drawn back a lot. Over in Ukraine, we finally have this group being destroyed, and a combined Romanian, Ukrainian, and Moldovan effort wipes out Transnistria. Crimea is under Ukrainian control again, and Mariupol is unseized. We have the recapturing of Kharkiv, and the liberation of Donetsk and Luhansk. So yeah, that really did change the tide of the war for Russia. And to kind of finish off Russia here, we finally have Finland pushing Russians completely out of their country, and now the war is forever being fought in Russia. We have Ukraine pushing Russia out of northern Ukraine, and for the first time since 2014, there is not a single Russian soldier in Ukraine. So this war has been being fought for years now, and um... Let's just go ahead and say that the uh, the fighters are tired of fighting. You know, this is all of Eastern Europe versus Russia and Belarus. I think they've had enough. So a peace conference is held over here in Oslo and some new borders are drawn up. All right, so taking a look at this peace treaty, it does look a little bit funky over here in the north, but other than that, not a lot of things have changed. There's been some slight border moving, but other than that, it's relatively the same. There hasn't been a country that's disappeared, so that's, I guess, good for everybody. But let's go ahead and break it down. So up north, we have Finland getting this little chunk of Russia over here. I'm not sure what they'll do with it. They'll probably do something with it eventually. Finland getting all of this area. I think this is, actually has a name for this entire area. Also, they are just on the outskirts of St. Petersburg, which is right there at that gray pixel, I'm pretty sure. So they didn't lose the city, but it is kind of threatened if they want to do anything else in the future. Next up, we have Estonia. Obviously, they're expanded a little bit. Latvia's expanded a little bit. You have Kaliningrad being split between Lithuania and Poland. Belarus is given a new government, but they do have to cede a little bit of their eastern claims over to Russia. Ukraine fully gets all of their land back, including all of the Donbass area, as well as Crimea, and it is officially recognized as Ukraine again, even though it still technically is. Transnistria is annexed by Moldova, and unfortunately for Georgia, they do have to lose a little bit of land here. So South Ossetia and Abkhazia those do have to go over to Russia just because Georgia got wiped out pretty quickly and Russia was not about to let that slide. So yeah, Russia's been reduced to uh, no warm water port having nation other than the Black Sea. But then, you know, Turkey doesn't exist, so maybe not. But that is going to do it for today's video. So if you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. That really shows me that you guys are enjoying these videos and that I should continue posting them. If you want to see any other type of video, if it has anything to do with mapping or just, you know, like stuff. I did a World Box video. I did a Hoi4 stream. Anything like that, I'll consider doing. And yeah, so once again, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.